Hello and welcome to the Chapter 3 podcast on Section 3.1. Today we're going to talk about chemical equations. Chemical equations is basically a way of representing a chemical reaction using only the symbols of the, of the uh, compounds, which are chemical formulas. Okay, um, As you can see in the figure on the uh, right, there are reactants and products. Reactants are on the left-hand side of the arrow. Um, and the products on the right-hand side. The arrow kind of separates the products from the reactants. You'll also notice that there are, are um, coefficients. These are the numbers in, the, in front of the formulas that are used for the purpose of satisfying the law of conservation of mass. Remember the law of conservation of mass states that mass is neither created nor destroyed, which basically means that I have to have equal amounts of atoms on both sides, and not only equal amounts, but the same kinds of atoms. So you can't have matter spontaneously disappearing or reappearing normally. Um, these coefficients are added by ourselves in the process of balancing. Sometimes your equations will have these already for you. Other times you'll have to add them yourself. Um, when you put a number in front, it basically applies to the whole compound itself. So it could represent two molecules or two formula units. But you can also interpret it in terms of individual atoms for the purpose of balancing. And this is something we talked a little bit about at the end of the last chapter, but we're going to focus more on it uh, in this chapter. In terms of balancing equations, basically we're, we want to ensure that we have equal amounts of atoms on both sides. And we're looking for the smallest whole number ratio of coefficients. So if we have, if we have a situation where we can reduce all the coefficients across by a common factor, then we will do so. And remember, we can only reduce the, the numbers in front. We cannot reduce any of the subscripted numbers because we cannot change the formulas of our compounds. So in this example, we have an unbalanced equation. Sometimes this is called a skeleton equation. So we have um, methane plus oxygen producing carbon dioxide and water. If you count up the amounts of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens on both sides, for this unbalanced equation, they are not equal. So notice how we only have two oxygen atoms on one side, but three on the other. So this is what we're talking about in terms of making sure that we have the same numbers and amounts on both sides. So the way we balance this is by adding numbers in front. So by the process of adding a two in front of the oxygen on the left-hand side and the water on the right-hand side, we not only balance the oxygens, but we also balance the hydrogens. So now the carbons, the hydrogens, and the oxygens are all equal. And this is illustrated uh, below uh, with some uh, pictures to kind of help you understand what's going on. And this reaction actually takes place when we use our Bunsen burner. So if you remember back to our uh, flame lab, that was, a re that was the energy that drove uh, the flame tests. Um, besides balancing the equation, it's also important for us to know what state of matter the reactants and the products are in. Um, so sometimes we'll add uh, the symbols after the, the um, compound to indicate what state of matter it is. So solid, we put an S in parentheses. If we have a liquid, it's an L in parentheses, a gas is a G in parentheses. AQ stands for aqueous, which and aqueous means dissolved in water. And you can kind of see the difference between the states of matter. So what happens with ionic compounds in water is that they actually dissociate into positive and negative ions. And we'll talk a little bit more about this um, as part of this uh, chapter. In addition to putting symbols next to the compounds, we can also uh, indicate some uh, conditions uh, by manipulating the arrow. So sometimes you may see uh, a delta above the arrow. That means that you're adding heat of some sort to get the reaction to go forward. And sometimes you may see an element or a compound above the arrow. That indicates that you have a catalyst that's necessary to drive the reaction. Catalysts, just like in um, like your biological enzymes, those are also forms of catalysts. They speed up the rate of the reaction, but not consumed as part of the process. I believe that's it, so I will see you soon.